Alrighty, I'm back. Yay! Uh, off doing things I'm not allowed to talk about. Um, because of NDAs and all that. But, uh, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at, uh, gen locking and timecode in Unreal. Um, so these are two, two of the reasons you may want a SDI camera as opposed to, like, a HDMI thing or a webcam or something like that. Um, so we're just in a blank project, uh, and so we need to enable a couple of plugins. Um, the main ones being the time data monitor, the virtual productions utilities, and either the Blackmagic or the Aja plugin, depending on what uh, card you have. Um, so you will need a compatible uh, Blackmagic or Aja card, as well as a camera with SDI inputs and outputs and gen lock input and output so some most high-end cameras have time code and sdi out but not all of them have gen lock which is the tricky part um so we're going to look at the how uh, and then after that we'll look at the why uh so to do this is quite simple um so first of all you need to figure out how you have things plugged in um, so we're going to be looking at a setup you might use with a non-gen lockable tracking, that is, for example, the Vive. Um, so we will be using the SDI out. Um, so the video signal out has timecode embedded, so we can pick up the timecode from that. Uh, it also has, uh, the engine can also gen lock to that timecode, which it's not proper gen lock, but, um, that's pretty good. Um, if you have another tracking system, such as uh, Mosis or OptiTrack, so here's the Mosis, um, they actually have a GenLock port, which means you are going to have to get yourself a sync generator, a GenLock generator, so this is the Blackmagic one, but Aja make one as well, um, and then you'll have to plug, you know, one of these into your camera and then one of those into the tracking, and then you'll have to plug another one of these into Unreal. Uh, so that is, this is my card, so you want the, that's the ref in, um, and so that's how you would hook it all up. I might throw up a crudely drawn Photoshop image, um, to show how that works. Um, so yeah, so the gen lock has to go to everything, um, and then that's what you're gen locking to. So keep that in mind, um, if you're going to be pulling gen lock off the SDI, uh, sorry, off the video or off the ref, because, um... Yeah, if you have an external device, pull it off the ref. Don't use the video if you're using an external sync because it won't actually sync. All right, so now that you've figured that one out, uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is click Blueprint Class um, and we're going to create two of them. Uh, you want to hit the little drop down here and we're going to type Black Magic. Obviously type Aja if you're doing Aja. Um, and so you'll see Custom Time Step and Time Code Provider. Um, so those words will say Aja if you're using the Aja plugin. Um, so we need to create both of those, so just go ahead and create one. I don't know what I created. That's the time step. Alrighty. So we're going to go black magic, gen lock. So the time step is the gen lock. Uh, and then we're going to create another one, and it's going to be the time code. And we're going to call it black magic time code. Like. So, all right, save these two uh, and then open them up. Uh, if you get this like blueprint looking thing, you can just close it and then reopen it and it'll open just without it. Um, all right, so this one's time code. So again, we're just gonna be pulling time code off of the, uh, cam the video feed because there's no need. If you have like an, one of the AK Pro cards or the du Duo, two cards uh, with the reassignable inputs and outputs. Um, technically, you could send timecode in on one of those instead of getting it off the video. Um, and that's probably worth it if you have an external timecode device like the technical sync, you know. But in most cases, what I would do is, um, so at the start of a shoot, either jam the camera to the audio or the audio to the camera. So jam lock it, the timecode, um, and then you can unplug it uh, and then they should be synced, so you can then pull the time code off. Um, alternatively, um, you can just like run the time code out of the camera. Um, the thing is, uh, a system like OptiTrack, um, 
and I'll get into the, more of this later, actually has a gen lock in and time code in. Um, so OptiTrack is time code synced, so most of this isn't. Um, so you you know your your time code port on your camera may be occupied. -o. So um, that's why you just jam what you can, um, run the time code into like the OptiTrack and get the time code in Unreal off of the video feed. It, it's fine. Um, so yep, we're gonna go the deck link input 1080p. Uh, we're running at 25 fps. Under the time code format, LTC is the regular standard. VITC is like, if you didn't set VITC or you don't know what it is, then chances are it's going to be LTC. Uh, we don't need to do anything else, so we can hit compile and save it. Then we're going to go to our genlock. Same thing, I'll just close it and open it up again, like so. So, uh, this. So, I don't have anything plugged into the ref, that's why the ref isn't showing up. Um, so we're running 25 FPS, progressive, 1080p, yep, 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 yep. Uh, apply as well. This doesn't need a timecode format because it's not timecode. Uh, but obviously select, if you're using an external timecode, gen, uh, external genlock generator, then uh, you would select the ref input instead. All right, so we have those two. Next, what we're gonna do is go to window and then under developer tools, we have timecode provider, so this actually running something you may notice that is actually just the current time so that's going to count uh it's going to be stuck to 24 fps but it is literally just the time right now <laughs> uh yep yeah. uh that is okay next we're also going to look for under develop tools there should be a genlock one at the very bottom there we go and it's going to say no genlock because we're not genlocked and hide it up there. Alrighty, so the last thing is we've set the inputs for those gen locks. And as you can see, um, when you have these gen locks enabled, the video won't come into on, like the video input will be black until the time code is running. Um, so do keep that in mind. If you don't see video and it's like, oh, well, the gen lock isn't running, so that's why. Uh, there is reinitialize up there if you ever need it. So we have, we have it set as to where we're going to get it. So now we need to go into the project settings and tell Unreal to use it. Um, that's pretty easy. So we're going to start with time step. Uh, here we go, custom time step. And we're going to use the Blackmagic custom time step. As you can see, the gen lock is just swapped. The Blackmagic gen lock is the one we made. That's why I actually named it something different to what it was automatically set to. <laughs> um, and then we're going to go ahead and type time code. And under timecode provider, we are going to use, change it to our Blackmagic timecode. That's the one, uh, 25 FPS. Like so. Now, if we hit reinitialize, um, is it because OBS is. Is that. There we go. So OBS, the reason it didn't allow me to do it first because the Blackmagic capture card was added in OBS and OBS is open because it's what I record this on. Um, so th like the, the card can only do one program at a time. So OBS took, OBS was open first, so OBS took preference. Uh, easy fix though. Um, so now the viewport's gonna look a bit laggy. Um, that is because the viewport will be running at 25 FPS. There it is, 25. Um, which is why I don't recommend you <laughs> sort of keep genlock off while you're just editing stuff because it's like gonna be this i mean personally i don't like it some people might be used to it whatever All right so now the why if we open up the time data monitor um this isn't going to be illustrated too well but i will be doing a tutorial about this uh coming up but essentially the reason you want to genlock everything tracking and unreal and the camera and everything it means everything is going to be every piece of data you have whether that be a you know a frame of tracking data a, f a video frame an unreal generated frame they're all going to be generated at the same time so there's obviously there's going to be like a sort of offset between everything right because it's like the tr tracking is not instantaneous the video takes time to come into the engine however all of those offsets because everything was generated at the exact same time all of those offsets are going to be a whole frame apart so it's your tracking might be five frames apart your video might be two frames apart you know um so the problem is if it wasn't genlocked then you start getting to like half frames it's like oh the the video is 
2.8766 frames off the tracking or something that's ridiculous um very difficult to sync up things so keeping everything in whole frames makes things really easy to line up um the other thing i bring up with the time data monitor is did that just spike when i moved it oh it does too it is having the data monitor open call okay we're gonna um, so the date, time data monitor is this new thing that came out in 4.26, haven't seen anyone talking about it since. Um, essentially this will take in all your different time codes. Um, so in our case we've got the engine time code, if I take in, if I put in the video, the video will show up here. If I put in live link, you know, something that'll show up as well. And then we actually have an option to literally just type in an offset and it'll do it automatically for us. Or in the case of, let's say we were using OptiTrack because it has time code in, um, you know, that live link, OptiTrack live link plugin sends that time code data into Unreal. So then you can just hit this big calibrate button up here and that'll literally automatically line everything up because it's got its own time code. The camera's got its own time code. Unreal's got its own time code. So it can really easily just line everything up perfectly. So I'll be doing a video on that um, soon um first with the vive and then we have optitrack on order so when that comes in i can do a video on that instead oh as well as so um but yeah so that's that's one of the, you know one of the other reasons for doing all this um and yeah there you go um the only thing i would suggest is make sure your time code is set to free run on your camera not rec run um, so record run means it stays at zero and then when you hit record it starts counting up uh, rec uh, free run means it's just constantly ticking whether you're recording or not um, just makes things easier you know because you don't or because in like take record and stuff you'll start getting negative values if you like hit record before um, but anyway and look the time code shows up in the take recorder so if we hit record right now it's going to save that correct time code which means at floor, there we go. Um, three, two, one. So the take recorder has the exact same time code as what's coming in the engine. And then that makes things really easy for um, lining up in post. Cause when we, you know, when we, if we render this out in Unreal, then, you know, it's going to have that time code. You know, it's gonna have the correct time code. And so it's gonna make, lining up in post a breeze and then if we export the camera track the camera track is going to have a time code as well because fbx supports time code so that's going to make things easy as well Alrighty, so hopefully that was helpful um it's a bit short um it's pretty simple uh little thing but this is just really you know this just this is this is not necessarily a necessity but just a makes life easier for you sort of thing you know it's like you could easily do it without genlock or anything like that but it just makes the life so much easier for lining everything up perfectly you know you just have to worry about whole frame numbers when you're guessing the delay you know is it two or three frames not is it 2.33 2.55 it's just yeah it's it's quality of life thing so uh cool Alrighty, well thank you for watching